He graduated from North High and played around in town just a little bit, but um, found himself in some other areas, and we'll get to that very soon. But he's such a brilliant piano player. Please help me welcome to the stage Art Resnick. Hey, Art. How are you? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll be chatting with you in just a minute. I might as well take this opportunity to, to uh, introduce uh, the music because what I'm going to do is play a couple of tunes that I wrote it's for a little change, it's so you won't recognize them. One of them, uh, I lived in Paris for a year and I wrote one of them in Paris. And that's what we're going to play first. It's called, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's called uh, Soleil Revenu, which means uh, return of the sun. And the second one, it, I, I was playing with a uh, jazz saxophonist, uh, Benny Goldson, and I wrote an homage to Benny called, uh, he wrote Along Came Betty. So I wrote a tune called The Long Came Benny.
over, Art. Let's let's get centered, center stage, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yes. Oh, you okay? Okay. Here you go, my friend. Well, you, well, it, I, you can, ah, is that so hard? <laughs> We've had some fun together the last couple of days yeah, with the always, interview and getting to know each other yes, finally. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay with me. Uh, I've known your brother for like, what, 40 years? Oh, uh, you, well, that's very nice of you to put it in. He'll appreciate the 40 <laughs> years, I'm sure. <laughs> Billy, I, I hear tell Billy is here somewhere. So. No. Yeah, well, I, I got a little family text. Are you here, Billy? Oh, there God. you go. Hi, Art. Oh, I know. Oh, God. Brother Bill. Okay, so you know what? This is so much fun. Another North High graduate, which is the reason I bring this up. That's where Jazz 88 is located, in the school building of North High. It wasn't there when I went to school. In 40 fact, years ago? No. In fact, the building wasn't there when I... Oh, seriously? Oh, it's a whole different... Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't know those things because I grew up on the south side of town. I know you did. A little Richfield girl, what can I say? Uh, anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. So much fun to have you doing this. And uh, we have on the tables some of the 50th anniversary of Jazz 88 journals and take them with you. Take Yeah, so, I mean, I wish we could have given one to absolutely everybody, but we will, we will, we will. And I want to talk to you now a little bit about how you got you to look at that face. Look at that face. <laughs> how did you get your start in this music business? I mean, how old were you when you started playing piano and loving piano? I was a late starter. I was in my uh, probably mid-teens, about 14, 15, when I started actually trying to play. That's a late start, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But by the time I was a senior in high school... I was I wanted to playing in a kind of an R and B band. Okay. And I've been through the mill with about every kind of band other than country. Oh, I have never played polkas either. That's right. <laughs> never played a polka in my life. Well, and I don't think I've ever sung one. Yes, I have. I take that back. <laughs> when he, yes, I have. But anyway, with a lot of fun, mind you. But so you were in high school and you started uh, R and B, and then where did you go from there? Because I know you have such a great history. I want to get to it. Uh, okay, where did I go from there? Oh yeah, I I started my first gig was in Minneapolis, playing at. Uh, I think it was Duffy's on 26th and 26th. Oh, yeah. With Augie Garcia. All right, there you go. I'm sure some of you know who that is. Okay. Yeah, I played a little M3 Hammond organ. All right. And uh, it was just me, a drummer, and Augie. Oh, wow. How fun is that? It was okay for a while. Uh oh, <laughs> there's more to that story. I'm sure someday I'll hear it. Well, there was uh, there was no uh, let's see, I forgot who she, her name was, but she wasn't with. It was Louis Prima and who was Louis Prima's? Keely Smith. Keely, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There was no Keely Smith, so I got tired of it. I yeah. see. <laughs> Particular. So okay. But to fast forward a little bit, we were talking about Billy, but you also were uh, in a, you were here in the Twin Cities and you worked with Bobby Rockwell, the wonderful saxophonist. You worked with Billy Peterson and you worked under your own name. I know I'm jumping ahead, but uh, they can hear your history. It took me a while. It took me the 70s where oh. I really put it together. Uh, okay. Mid, you know, around mid 70s. Uh, I mean, I worked hard on playing jazz, listening. Again, some I think it was Ron Seaman said, you know, back then we didn't have, like, schools and all the rest of that stuff. It was, uh, it was mostly you had to listen okay. to records and learn to play by hearing it and, and, and practicing. And then, then practicing with your friends. Uh, and right. There you and, go. And then I formed, uh, a, well, I've been through many variations of it, but wound up recording with Billy and a uh, wonderful drummer, Paul uh, Lagos, Lagos who, oh, loved uh, his and work. Bob Rockwell. And uh, Bob and I wound up, like, after playing around town for about five years, uh, we both just took off for New York together, got a place up on the Upper West Side. Fun. 
And uh, Bob immediately got into uh, the Fat Jones uh, big band. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And uh, we started playing with some great players. And we formed a band uh, that uh, based on a I had a I had a Minnesota Minneapolis uh, manager named oh. Larry Burley. I know Larry Burley, yeah. sure. A lot of people know Larry. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he got us this gig, even though we were in New York and we found uh, this these incredible uh, other sidemen, uh, Rufus Reed and Victor Lewis. And we toured Alaska for the Alaska Arts Festival or Council, no, Alaska Arts Council. How uh, long were you there? We were there for a month. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was, it was and incredible. And then back to New York? And then back to New York, right. So at that point, you actually, didn't you ha keep those guys and you had a new yeah, name we, for the band? Yeah, we had so much fun playing together on the road. We were like flying in biplanes th oh my. through the mountains and making snow angels and uh, just going <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. We played at uh, we played at logging camps as well as as well as uh, major, you know, uh, well, clubs in clubs. Yeah, yeah in, in Alaska. OK, yeah. that's pretty incredible. Yeah. So when we got back, we decided we wanted to stick together and we we played uh, around New York. Was this band then the Expedition? This was Expedition, okay. right. We called it Expedition. It's because of the Alaska trip. And so did you record with them? I can't remember if you, you said You know, that. We, we actually made a uh, kind of a demo recording. I see. And, uh, then, and then we got the call to go with uh, Freddie Hubbard to, uh, to Australia. And we spent a wow. month doing that. And then I, when I got back, I got a call from... Uh, somebody in San Diego to come and teach at uh, San Diego State and uh, have a steady jazz gig. Wow. Yeah. So Offer you can't refuse. I left, yeah. Yeah. I, I and left. you played for, a, you, in that trio or whatever you were playing in, you played for a lot of jazz stars that came through San Diego. Wasn't that true? Well, I played for more of them in Europe than I did. Oh, And well. I played in New York with some, too. Okay. But, but mostly... In, uh, yeah, and San Diego, uh, I played with uh, some of the West Coast players I from see. L.A. They'd come down and play for the weekend. That's so fun. But then you, you didn't stay there. You ended up in Portland, obviously, and you were there for quite a few years, right? Well, yeah, I went from San Diego. I went to Paris for a year. Oh, I forgot about Paris yeah. and played Europe for a while, right? I played in Europe. Oh, nice. Uh, and uh, I was in the backup band for a few other people like uh, Thad, uh, not Thad Jones, um, Nat Adderley. Oh, That's yeah. What I couldn't think wow. Of. Yeah, we made a record, actually. I think it's called We Remember Canon. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you um, did a little recording when you were in Portland, but you chose to come home and be with family again. Not You haven't been here very long, right? I've been, well, I managed to get here about, uh, what was it, a few months before the COVID thing happened. Right. And you were going to perform here at Crooners with... Yeah. Bobby Shue. Bobby Shue, because you also backed him. Yeah. And that didn't happen because of COVID, correct? Right. Okay. So, but you're here and you're playing, and you're writing, and you're rehearsing with your friends Kenny Horst and Billy Peterson and and these guys up here on the stage. Would you do another song for us, please? Sure. Art Resnick, yeah. you're great. Okay. Excuse me, I'm gonna just put these away.
Ladies and gentlemen, Art Resnick. Here, Art. There you go. Wow. Wow. Now, don't forget, the top is not connected to the bottom, so to careful, good, yeah, just careful. Don't break it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's heavy. It will be. There's a glue stick in there. Art, thank you so much for doing this. How fun. Ladies and gentlemen, Art Resnick.